Um, so I'm John Cousins. I'm going to talk about uh, content creation and uh, uh, content, a workflow for creating creating content. And do uh, anybody here have blogs? And lots of you, right? Have blogs. Any of you published uh, any books? Great. And how about any online courses? Almost. Super duper. And podcasts? Anybody do a podcast? Great. Um, and anything else that I, I didn't mention? Those kind of things? Audiobooks, Audible, that kind of stuff? So, so cool. So um, let's see if I can make this completely into a, uh, so I'm not giving away the slides there. Huh? Let's see, how does this go? Great. So I, uh, subtitled this The Matrix because that's basically what I've come up with is sort of a, a structure for creating content. And it's worked really well for me. So my company is MBA ASAP, this company. I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, started a bunch of companies, took two of them public, done all those kind of things, you know, raised money, had, you know, investors and had employees and all that. And uh, about five years ago or so, I started to actually... Uh, uh, teach as well, maybe more than maybe six or seven years ago now. And I teach at a whole bunch of the different schools, universities here in town, um, and uh, I've really been enjoying that. I love having, you know, that where the where students, uh, you know, where the light bulb goes off. I just love that sensation. So now I think of myself as by, enabled by technology, right? That I'm a, an author, a blogger, a podcaster, a course creator. And my whole idea is, you know, my whole intention is to create content and then get it out to as widely as possible to the most people that it can, hopefully to influence folks. And my platform is WordPress. So I've, I've built a, you know, a platform kind of model where you have all the different social media and every, all these different sources, your mail, you know, list and all, sort of inbound marketing. And then I, so I use it as a marketing source and I also use it with landing pages and then sending out to all the different, uh, places where people can buy my content or use it. And then also as a, as a blogging platform, right? And that's initially what WordPress was developed as, as a blogging platform. So it also gives me great SEO and all that kind of stuff, you know, so I really love it. But you all know, right, you all are, I'm preaching to the choir here, right? You're all here because you love WordPress, right? So I don't need to, I won't talk too much about how great WordPress is because You've already been sold, right? I just wanted to give a plug to my, I, I host my sites. I have a number of sites and host them locally with Southwest Cyberport. And I really like that, having a, a local hosting service. They've been good, really great folks. So what I'm gonna start with is I started to think about this and I, oh great, this is how I, this is how I put all my content together. And I started thinking, well, wait a minute, why, why am I doing this content? Why do I even think that this is something worth my time to do and why am I so compelled to kill continue to generate content on this theme of business subjects, MBA kind of subjects, you know. And so that's what I wanted to talk about first, because really, I don't know if you, everybody's seen that Simon Sinek TED Talk. If you have, if you haven't, you should check it out because it's great. And if you have, it's really wonderful, right? And so I borrowed this from him. It's basically the why is the core. And Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche said, you know, if, if, as long as someone has a why, then they can deal with any how or what. And so I thought, let me go back and just give a few minutes of why the heck, I, why the heck I'm doing this, even just for myself, to understand, you know, that it really comes from some generative force, right? So MBA ASAP, it provides business school skills, and just like, you know, ASAP, as fast as possible, right? And I want to help people learn skill sets that can make you more valuable at your job so you can maybe progress up the corporate ladder or start a side hustle or start a company or anything that can enable people to self-actualize more using business skills because we live in this capitalist society and they can really, really well work to get your dream and your idea out and then if you're doing something that you love, you're happier and you're helping people in a meaningful way. And that's what I want to do is enable help people do that. I want to be a catalyst for that, right? So that gives me some sort of goal for why I'm doing this and a reason for doing it. And so everything I deliver is primarily from, a, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, you know, because I'm an entrepreneurial geek, is um, it's a business model where every, it's digital first, it's really digital, well, digital first, right? Everything's a digital download, so 
Once I make the content, I don't have to worry about packaging something and mailing it to people or even paywalls and all that kind of stuff. I just set it up. I have all automation, drive through a nice marketing funnel, and, and then it, it makes money for me. Um, and I, I believe that business skills can be leveraged across lots of different you know, ways to, sit, to solve the big problems that we're starting to experience and, uh, and also to help with economic prosperity for regions and for individuals. And I think that choosing yourself and investing in yourself is the greatest investment, right? So I, I think that it's wise to do that. Just like this guy here who has been very successful at those kind of things. So I like that, you know, thinking about uh, formal education is great, but it's not the only path. Sometimes people have to learn things quickly and they want to learn them inexpensively. And I want to access not just local markets, but just all over the world. Anybody who's interested, they can pick this stuff up and start checking it out. And a lot of people have been talking about this, right? Reed Hoffman, the guy who, you know, from the PayPal Mafia, and the Peter Thiel was his, his partner there. These guys just think that, you know, the continual learning and being an autodidact is really cool. So I want to give the materials for folks to be able to do that. And so this is just my, you know, my uh, way of doing it. And my personal story, I was an engineer. I went back to school, got an Ivy League MBA. You know, it took me two years. I didn't work for two years. I spent, you know, a couple hundred grand on tuition and living expenses and all that kind of stuff. Ended up digging myself maybe a, you know, half a million dollar hole over those two years with lost income and everything else. And then came out and had this nice degree. But was that really the best way to do it? Maybe, maybe not. You know, you can learn a lot. Of, I would argue now you can learn a lot of these skills for little money and then maybe apply some of that money that I spent on my education towards actually doing a business or something or other interesting things in your life. So this is about, you know, what the intention and goal is of what I do, you know. Um, as I've been teaching, I realize that, you know, textbooks are cumbersome. You may not need to do, go through the kind of uh, process that I did and how could I make that better for folks. So what I also try to do is use the Pareto principle, which is, you know, the 20% information that gives you 80% of the, role, the results. This is a, a power law. Pareto was an Italian economist that came up with this. And this, this formula actually goes across a lot of different things. It's really interesting. Like power users of Coca-Cola, there's 20% of the Coca-Cola drinkers drink 80% of the Coca-Cola. So the 80-20 principle works in a lot of interesting ways. So I've written blog posts on this and all, and this is sort of my model. If you have computer skills and you have business skills and you have something that you love, whatever it is, you know, fly fishing, flower arranging, could be gardening, anything, if you have that thing, if you have those two skills at the bottom there, you can actually create a viable career for yourself doing the thing that you love. And that's what I want to be a, an, a, an enabler of and an encourager of and a supporter of for everybody. So that's, you know, in the big picture, you know, Capitalism and the market mechanism really works well, and we should all participate in that. And this is a, a global kind of thing. And I always like the idea of doing good by doing well. You know, doing good work, and then the money is sort of, or the, the support of a livelihood is sort of the artifact of, of doing good work. So I also wanted to test a newfangled business model, you know, doing these kind of things. So digital first, all automation. I'm just doing it myself. I'm a solopreneur, right? Um, and as I thought about it, I really had enterprise fatigue. You know, working for a company, I don't like bosses. Running a company, I really don't want to, you know, all the employees. I don't want to have investors. So I don't want to take on venture capital and have people, you know, I don't want to have partners because that, all these things are drama, right? I just want to be my own person, have a lot of little customers, and they vote with their money and, uh, and make this work. So that, that's been my model and what I've been doing. And it's really been fun. And I think uh, I, that's why I want to share it. So my ecosystem, it's just a hub and, you know, uh, outposts. And those outposts are social media and other things that drive inbound using social media, right? And my website, WordPress, and uh, my e email list. I use MailChimp for email lists. So now, I just wanted to give you the background of why, you know, I think that that's the most, the generative seed is, right, is what, 
why would I want to write this stuff? Why is it even compelling to me? And those are all sort of the reasons of why this topic is kind of compelling so that keeps me going and keeps me wanting to generate content. And so once you want to generate content, then how the heck can you generate it and, and repurpose it and all that. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. This is the, the real meat and potatoes. So when I first started this thinking, you know, I'll just write a book, MBA, ASAP, just the, all the different subjects and just really quick and heck, I, if I put five pages or ten pages of each, I'd get, you know, 200 pages and that'd be great. And as I started writing, you know, I took each of the subjects, they started telescoping out and I realized as I did say the first, you know, I did some accounting and, well, heck, this is almost a standalone book, let me finish that and, and here's another one, you know, for finance and all these things. So, I started to, from a monolithic kind of idea about this content just being one book, I unbundled it, right? It kind of unbundled itself. It just got, it grew bigger than I thought it was going to be. And so then I thought of, well, each one's kind of a standalone product, and then I can sell those as standalone, standalone things, and then aggregate them together too, right? So now I have all these different subject matter, you know, for, for content, right? Entrepreneurship, under, reading and understanding financial statements, become a better negotiator, uh, patents and intellectual property, how to file a patent, which is very, a lot simpler than you might think. Um, accounting, how, you know, what is accounting all about? Finance, economics, you know, corporate strategy, uh, leadership, management, all these kind of topics. And I've been teaching these topics, and as I teach them, um, started to write a little bit about it, have slide decks about it, and all those kind of things, and then how could I make that material grow is basically what this is about. So then I started to look at, I have all these different, these different uh, media that I could do it in, right? I do my books through KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, which is super simple. Anything you write in Word, you just upload it there and it becomes a Kindle book, you know, like that. They have a nice little cover creator and stuff and, and you're off and running. They give you an ISBN number, you don't have to do anything, right? And then it's on Amazon. And, and then they also have a paperback uh, alternative too, where they publish, it's print on demand, so when somebody clicks and buys the paperback, they print one copy and send it to the person. And so you don't have, you don't have to do a thousand copies and keep them in your garage and hope you're going to sell them and then, you know, put them in mailing things and put a mailing label and ship it out the door. It's just, they print it out and it goes right out from there. No inventory, no working capital. It's a beautiful business model, and Amazon's a great partner for that, right? So I have the e-books, and then what I do, you know, I have audio books, uh, I have a blog, and, you know, uh, use slide decks for sort of, and that's been an important thing, is it's almost an outlining tool, you know, making a slide deck, and that gives you sort of the narrative arc of where you want to go, and then you can just fill in the dots, you know, interpolate the dots in between. Um, so that's been really good. Infographics, newsletters, I have a podcast, you know, videos on YouTube and Vimeo and online courses on Udemy and Teachable I'm using as a platform now too. And then looking into doing uh, gamification of this material so that people can gain intuition with the, in a dynamic way of how does this all interact um, sort of with uh, business games and things and simulations for people. So this is the, the matrix part, right? And it's not this matrix, but I thought you'd like this picture, so. <laughs> still looks kind of modern, even though it's, you know, a bunch of years old. It's this, pretty much this kind of matrix, right? Where I have all those subject kind of matters, and then all of my uh, different ways of delivering the stuff, and then each one of those intersections uh, represents a piece of content. It might be a corporate finance ebook or a negotiating, you know, uh, online course, whatever. So, if you have ten, just to do the math easy, if you have ten different subject matters and ten different ways of delivering it, that's 100 different pieces of content. If each one of those is creating $100 a month, you know, that's nice money. If each one's doing $1,000 a month, that's $100,000 a month. That's nice money. You know, it starts to become real money when you have lots of different ones. None of them have to be home runs, but if you have, a, you know, 100 solid singles, you know, I don't mean to use sports metaphors, but suddenly it can start aggregating up into some money to support yourself. So here's basically my workflow, and it starts from my blog, right? My blog is basically where, you know, when you think about blog posts, that's the most granular thing. It's, 
it's something that you can, you can get your mind around. You don't have to think about, oh my gosh, this whole giant amount of material. 300 words, maybe, right? Or 1,000 words, whatever it is. It's a doable piece of material. And you can also, the nice thing is, it's right away, you send it out, and you see if people like it, by how many people you know, look at it or whatever, and you can start to see the engagement. So it's sort of like you're a trapper or something, or a hunter, right? Where you, you put out the blog, you hit, hit publish, come back the next day and you see what's in the trap. You know, how many people have actually looked at it. And then you can see, oh, the people like this one more than this, and this one's getting a lot of ga engagement. Maybe that's something that I could write more on because people are interested in that subject. Slide decks, again, that's, you know, SlideShare is a great place to share that kind of content. And that's owned by LinkedIn, and, which is owned by Microsoft. Um, but that really is a great tool for outlining things, you know, instead of just making an outline like you did in grade school or something. And I do lots of outlining, but it seems to me a really easy way to outline and you can actually see the narrative flow. You can see, oh, I want to go from this point to that point to that point. Here's the beginning of what I want to say, the introduction, it builds up, and, and then here's the ending summarizing what I want to say. And then you have kind of a, a schematic to follow for creating your content and you can make a blog post for each way along the along the way or maybe three blog posts along the way for each step and suddenly it starts aggregating up into into something that could be an, a, an ebook and so ebooks and paperbacks and then from there what I do is I take those those books once I publish them and just take each chapter and read it into my computer. Into I use GarageBand, but any type of audio source. I have a little USB mic that plugs in, right? And I just sit there and put up the book, read it, and then edit that file a little bit, publish it up uh, to ACX, is the uh, um, Audible Creation Exchange. And that's also owned by Amazon. And ACX, you just upload each of those audio files, and then they review them, make sure the audio quality is good, and then you have that book goes out to Audible, iTunes, and Amazon. So then on your Amazon site, you'll have a little, a little thing that uh, will show, I'll just show you, for, well, I'll show you later, but uh, we'll show the three, the three different options, right? Where you can buy it for the Kindle, you can buy it for the paperback, or you can buy the Audible version. And then what I do is I take those audio segments and put those into iMovie, and GarageBand is a free, a free thing that comes, a free, uh, uh, audio workstation that comes on uh, on your Apple computer and iTunes uh, iMovie is a complete movie studio that you can download from the you know Am uh, Apple App Store for like five dollars it's ridiculous and it's a great movie studio so I take those audio tracks and then just get lots of uh, um, different images put those on to, to the audio things, and then upload those to Udemy or Teachable or something like that and make audio. Um, those are the audio segments, which are the core of my online courses. So then I make online courses. So each one sort of flows from the last step, right? And then I also use those audio segments to create some of my podcast episodes. And I do other ones where I interview people, but some, some of them just from the books, you know. So the whole idea here is, right, like a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. And uh, I got that picture because someone in China, I, I did some other Lao Tzu quotes on my, my Twitter feed, and they said that the guy I was using was not Lao Tzu, it was some other, you know, Chinese philosopher, so sent me that picture. So I know that's really supposed to be a picture of him. But right, so if we can do it in bite-sized chunks, it's easier to do if you have a plan for how you're going to get to aggregating up this stuff, right? And it's just like, like snow, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, an accretion kind of thing, you know, at one, one flake on flake, right? One on top of the other, and as you do these things, suddenly you have a whole foot of snow, right? And it's all about, I don't know if you know from, one of the big things in, uh, in entrepreneurship is MVP, you know, minimal viable product. Make your product that has the, the core feature sets but not a whole bunch of embellishments. Get it in front of customers, see what they like, and then revise the content, revise the product, you know, accordingly. And so that's what I do with my, my books because it's just a Word file that I've uploaded to, uh, to KDP. I can go back and add a chapter, I can revise a chapter, I can find a spelling, you know, crowd source for spelling mistakes and make those spelling things and just upload the thing again and, and within 10 hours or so, 
the new book is up there. So I don't have to worry about, is the book perfect? Is it really one of, because I'm not, it's not set in stone. It's not a manuscript that then I'm publishing and then I'm going to have 1,500 copies that are going to be the same. I can change it tomorrow. You know, I can say, gee, I've left out a little section on that. Or somebody says, oh, I would like you to say more about that. Or, well, you really said too much about that. And I can just edit along and not, it, it's a fluid kind of thing. And you don't have to be afraid about putting up your, your content that way. So I came up with a little, you know, acronym AIR, right? Accretion, that's, you know, just doing it. Iteration, right? You're getting the feedback and you're iterating in this process. And revision, right? And, and the, the phrase I was saying, the best, the best writing is rewriting. So I actually thought of that and then looked it up to say, who said that? I couldn't remember who said that, right? And think about people grabbing content and copying each other and stuff like that. Look at this. Here is, so here's E.B. White. That's a quote from E.B. White, right? Quote from Truman Capote. <laughs> quote from Robert Graves. Oh. <laughs> quote from Louis Brandeis, the great judge. So I don't know who said it, but, uh, and here's even John Iaptek saying just about the same thing. You know? So that's an interesting thing that these guys just all, you know, steal each other's, who, I don't even know who said it. So the same thing for the podcast type of uh, process too, right? Starts from the blogs, and then the audio from the books. I also do interviews on Skype and use Ecamm as a little Skype recorder, and we'll do it that, and then use GarageBand, and then use uh, Liberated Syndication, Libsyn, to get it out to iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and all these other, other sources. Very, very, again, a very simple process, all from that initial material. And uh, so then I'm thinking, too, with my podcast content and, uh, and also my other audio contents and stuff, I'm really anxiously awaiting, you know, a free or very low cost transcription service. It'll take that audio, make it into words, and then I can repurpose those words into all these textual kind of contents as well. So sort of go in reverse again. Yeah, Sonia. Check out rev.com. Rev.com. Yeah. Rev yeah. Rev.com? Super. Oh, you said too. Great. It's a Oh, I see. It's what? Transcriber? Fantastic. That's what I, you know, I know there, there's been ones that I've been looking and I just haven't found one because that way, if I can just plug it into a transcription thing, get that content, I can lift out different pieces, put it into my books, put them into this, make it into blog posts. So the other part is not just bundling it up, right, but disaggregating things. And uh, I, once I've written a book, I can like pull out all kinds of little three or 500 word things and say, here's a blog post, here's a blog post. Oh, and by the way, this is from my book or this is from my course and all those kind of things. And cross promote everything too. So again, the content is fluid. The whole idea, you know, I high bolded repurpose because it's repurposing the stuff in all these different ways, right? Revisions, we talked about that. And the blog is a great way to gauge initial interest, see what kind of engagement, which, which content topics seem to have interest and in which ones maybe are a little bit lukewarm. And if they get a lukewarm reception, that doesn't necessarily mean the content isn't compelling. It may be that the way I phrased it and wrote it wasn't that compelling, so then I'll go back to the drawing table and rewrite it and see if I can do it in a way that then does get some traction. Because it's all about engagement, right? It's about having audiences and engaging with them. So here's the next thing I'm going to do too, like rev.com, is look at how can I expand my matrix, you know. I have all these contents, how can I get another layer there? And so I've started to translate my <coughs> books into different languages. And Bing and Google Translate, believe it or not, are getting pretty darn good, especially in some languages like Spanish, they're, they're quite good. And you can translate on that, get a native speaker then to go through and just revise the little bit of pieces that might be a colloquial expression that didn't translate well or other things, and then suddenly you have a, your content in a whole different language that then you can go to a whole different market, you know? And if you start thinking about some of the big languages, that, that can be really, really nice. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's a way to expand my matrix that I'm just working on now and using new tools that are just starting to come out. You have a question, yes? Well, uh, you know what? Uh, the audiobooks. The audiobooks are, sell are, are my best sellers. And, and I'm really surprised even. I, like, I, I saw a lot of 
uh, and that's another thing is because I have this matrix, I don't, I don't really, I start out guessing what I think will be the best, but then I just fill in all the, all the dots there, right? And one was an audio book on corporate finance. And I thought, no one's going to, I'm reading these formulas for, you know, net present value and internal rate of return. And they're kind of, you know, the, the cash flow zero to the, to the, you know, square divided by, you know, and, and then plus this term, plus this term. I thought, no one's going to, they're not going to want to read this. It's ridiculous. But I did it. And it really sells. I can't believe it. You know, it's like people will buy that and, they, and I get these nice reviews that say, oh, I read it, you know, listened to it three times on my way to my, you know, my final exam in corporate finance and I aced it and da da da. And, and so a lot of times people use this as supplementary materials if they're in a, in a, you know, class or something like that too. But that was a surprising example of something that I really didn't think was going to work, but I did it because I could and, and it, it uh, actually would surprise me. So then I do lots of cross-promotion too, right? Everything gets cross-promoted. So any blog post talks about the other kind of things, where this comes from, where, you know, and, you know, refer to this blog post and all. So it's all interrelated and that helps with, with sales, but it also helps with uh, SEO and things like that, right? And then I also use uh, AdSense and uh, affiliate, I make a lot of affiliate pages too, where I, I use actually, my affiliate marketing now is just Amazon affiliates. I just basically uh, use Amazon um, affiliates on my web, web pages and I build a lot of web pages where they're just links uh, from Amazon affiliates and I'll do uh, like the top 10, top 10, you know, business books by women, top 10 entrepreneurial books, top 10 business biographies and each one of those little books and I'll, and I'll these are ones that I've read and I'll put a little, you know, bios, uh, little descriptions next to them. Seven minutes? And, um, and then if they click on that and go into Amazon, whatever they buy, I get a nice percentage of those sales from Amazon. So that's a beautiful thing. And AdSense is a tool that Google has that uh, you just, you know, populates it with ads. So there's other ways to monetize things as well, popularity. So I thought about, you know, talking about my partners in this too, that what are my key partners? And I don't know if, if you know this business model canvas, this is another thing from entrepreneurship, you know, the, those two gold rings on that side are, represent uh, who are your key partners. And I started thinking about who are my key partners? How, what technologies are I enabled by? And I realized that there's a few of them that have lots of different tools that I use. Like Amazon, right? I said I use that KDP and that's the Kindle stuff and the paperbacks on demand and the audiobook creation exchange, ACX, and that sends them out to all the audio things. They're the lar third largest search engine. So we start thinking about search. It's not just Google. Google's number one. YouTube is the second biggest search engine. I have a YouTube channel as well that I repurpose my, you know, once I make the video files. Amazon is the third biggest search engine of all. It's not Bing. It's not any of these other ones, Yahoo. It's Amazon. So they're this whole ecosystem that you can, you know, uh, sell into and also use them. I use Amazon affiliate marketing, I said. And then as I do the translations, then I can have, you know, Amazon Spain, Spain Am you know, Amazon uh, uh, Germany, all these different ones. And then also AWS I, for my gamification and other things. I, I actually also made a uh, Alexa skill uh, that's not developed yet. I've, I've been working on it though for, for quotes and things like that. So that, Ale you know, it's a, a thing that uh, Alexa, then you can say, Alexa, please give me a quote for the day, you know. Google, Google Analytics, AdWords, right? I use, I use a lot of paid advertising in search, you know, using AdWords. AdSense, where I put their ads on my blog and my websites and then I get paid that way. They own YouTube, so YouTube is gigantic, right? Uh, Google Play for my podcasts, you know, Google Translation for my translations, Google Drive for a lot of my content I put up there, and Google Plus is a social media site. I mean, they're a, a giant system with lots of different tools. Apple, I use those for my production tools, right? The, also, iTunes has my podcasts and audio books. GarageBand's my, how I do the audio production. iMovies, how I do the video production. And they're also my computer, you know, and phone, and I use my phone a lot for my notes and all of the kind of stuff. So. They're another big partner. And then Microsoft, right? Word, I use to write all my stuff. PowerPoint for my slide decks. They own Skype, and I use Skype for my interviews. If I'm interviewing somebody in Europe or somewhere else, it's amazing. You just get a Skype channel going, and you get the recorder, and then you just do your interview, and it records it, and then you put it in the GarageBand, and put it up on Libsyn, and it's done. 
They own LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn as my big social media, right? Because it's sort of self-screened for what I'm doing. It's all business folks, right? Linda is a great source for, uh, for training videos and things, and they're, they're good. And Bing Translation and Azure is their, their uh, cloud hosting service. So. so then, obviously, I'm doing this all through a marketing funnel where I get, keep, and grow my customers, all the traditional kind of stuff that way. Um, you know, so I'm doing all the, you know, the, that kind of digital marketing in all these kind of ways. Because at the end of the day, you want to monetize this stuff, right? You want to make, make money on it. So here's all the ways that, you know, kind of do that. And please, uh, I'll put this up and stuff, but here's, you can follow me in a lot of, I'm, I'm just on almost all kinds of stuff, very active on Twitter and everything else. And, uh, and you can subscribe to all my different stuff. And that's it. Question. So you write a book and you put it on Kindle and then you put it, you record the audio and you put it on Audible and that makes sense because both are owned by Amazon. But then when you go to put it on Udemy, do they have any problems with you using the same content you're already selling? Well, no, because on Udemy then it's all, it's videos. So, so it's a completely different content. It's all videos, but I'll also put in a, a copy of the book you know, as a, a digital download in there, and I put in my slide, you know, presentations and all kinds of stuff, and infographics and all that, yeah, so, so the Udemy course is, uh, yeah, I take that audio content and then make it into movie files and put lots of, you know, graphics and images and stuff on it. That's it, but great, great question. What else? Yes? Uh, so, do you have all the security for all these, for your, for your sites and all your, your different platforms? Well, the beautiful, I don't do anything. Amazon, let, I let them take care of their security. And Udemy, I let them take, you know. So it's all platforms that I don't, they do the paywalls. They do all that kind of stuff, all the security. They just send me, a, you know, they just tra wire transfer money into my account monthly based on the sales. What about copyrights? Oh, I own all the copyrights. I, I copyright everything, you know. I, it's all, they, well, that, my whole idea is basically is, uh, I have a holding company called Intelligentsia, and it's all about making intellectual property, creating assets. And so assets of, of mind, right? So it's all intellectual property. Yes, everything's copyrighted. Everything has ISBN numbers. You know, everything is, uh, you know, um, my, my content. But I don't really care if people take it and, and, and steal it and share it and stuff like that, because a lot of times, most of this, a lot of stuff too, I'll put out for free in various versions just because it's better, the, the worst thing you can have is obscurity, right? You want to you be known in some way. So if somebody looks at something or, you know, uh, then maybe they'll buy something else if they like that or so. I'm, I'm very freewheeling with having my stuff on YouTube, on my blog posts, you know, sharing in all different kinds of ways where, you know, I'll give free coupons to this and that and the other thing. It's all about marketing and, and really engagement and gaining trust with, with a bunch of people and can't expect them to become customers right off the bat. You got to show them that here's a bunch of stuff that can help you and then maybe later on they'll buy something. Well, it is a lot of work, but it's not that much work. Um, if you have a blog and if you've written 100 blog posts or 20 blog posts, you're well on your way. You know, if you just start thinking about strategically about how can I aggregate up my 300 words, you know, I do a day or a week or whatever into something that's going to be meaningful and, you know, that, that way. So um, if you're already blogging or thinking about blogging or, or, or like writing at all or like even talking, <laughs> you know, the, uh, like the podcast is almost effortless in a way. It's just like, there's an interesting person. I want to in talk to them and ask them what they're doing. That, that's all it is, you know, and so... So yeah, it is, it is, and it that may seem like more work, you know, it's work. And that's why I wanted to go through at the beginning. It's like, why the heck am I doing this? Why do I even feel compelled to do this? Why would I want to keep doing it? Why don't I just say I've done enough? But I, I like doing it, you know, so whatever you do that you really enjoy, and that's another way to gauge it too. Whatever you're doing when you procrastinate, that's the thing you should be doing. <laughs> How do you uh, calculate, what's your business model? How do you calculate how much money you're going to make every year and your budget for all your expenses? I don't really have much expenses. 
I mean, I have no expenses, really, other than my time sitting there at the computer and the amount of coffee that I have to have to do that or something, really. You know, and the electricity for the computer or something, there's no, I don't have much in expenses. And then once it's out there, I have no expenses. Like I said, there's no inventory, there's no, I have no working capital. It's basically I put it out there, you know, and then uh, I use, well, I have a few expenses. I use some automated tools, you know, like Crowdfire and uh, Social Jukebox and some other ones to help me generate, you know, content and move people through my funnel and then, you know, but a lot of these tools like, you know, Google Analytics and, you know, a lot of these things are just free. Most of them are free. All the social media sites are free. So I'm chugging people through a funnel that is primarily no cost, very, very low cost. So I have very little costs. And as far as I know, it's just then it's just my revenues, right? So I can't really project those. I can sort of project, but each, each year I hope to do another, you know, I, I did a mini presentation of this at a million cups back in June. I was thinking, well, how did I, how did I do? Because it were, I was thinking I'm going to do some of this content. Well, in that amount of time, I did five more books. I did three online courses. And so hopefully I'll do a similar thing for next year so it just keeps building. And these things are evergreen. They just keep going, you know, so. And they're, they're saying, right on. Is that what you're saying? No. Can I just take one more question? What? Where are you based at? Out of, uh, I have a little office in my house. Albuquerque? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Albuquerque, and I just, uh, you know, just uh, on my desk, I have a computer, and that's really it. Will you tweet your slides out? I do what? Will you tweet your slide link out? They link to your slides. Absolutely. I'll put these up on SlideShare, and I'll tweet it out. My, my Twitter handle is at JJ Cousins, and yeah, I will. I'll put them up there. You bet. And if you email me, I'll send you a set, too, or something, too. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening to me. I really appreciate it.